I don't know. I don't know everybody here is in the same religion. So, but we become a part of what we do. Hallelujah. We know that everybody here is a church person. Okay. Um, thank God for my coming. I thank God to for my son Lenny for the opportunity to come and speak to you. Uh, for this one hour I've been here, I've been blessed. I've talked a lot. I, I came preparing to talk to lecturers and professors. And no matter what I do as a teacher and trainer, anywhere I go, I go with more than five different messages or topics of teach. So when I come in and look at the setting, and the Lord tell me this is what I want to say. This other four to the next side. Okay? I'll go very, very brief. But I want to start with the question. The question. Based on what she has said and the, the contribution of that C sharp, I want to ask the question, why are we here? Let me start with the question. Why did you come here? I want an answer. Why did you come here? <laughs> because you came for a reason. I, I could have been somewhere in Mugele now. I lost the son, the spiritual son. And then uh, I got to meet the pastor. Died. And he died to me. So I told him, I said, I don't know when I send people there. I will not come out when you go in Shakale. My uncle said, I don't know. I said, I don't know. I said, I don't know. I said, I don't know. Now listen. I need to ask the person with me. So I will be here. I appreciate you. Let me tell you one thing you must understand. Christians are prone to attend seminars, meetings where there's more food and drink than where they can get information. Listen again. Church people, believers, Christians, they are more concerned attending meetings where there's food and where there's pleasure than attending a meeting where they will be given information. 80% of church people are poor. 80% of church people are poor because they have been taught before now that if you want to be rich, you need to fast and pray. Spirituality has to do with wealth. You can pray from today till the end of this year, till the end of next year. It will not make you rich. Fasting and prayer only builds your spirit. It builds your spirit. It draws you nearer to God. And when you get closer to God in His presence, you get inspiration on what to do on Christ. I discovered that many believers, they are so spiritual, they have no earthly value. They are so spiritual, they don't have earthly value. If you check the church today, when you come to the church, 70% of pastors are beggars. That's true. I say that in my church. If the church that I passed by founded, nobody in my church, there's no many people there. They have money in their hands. But I bone them. I tell them, without you, I stand in my church. Most times I phone my program and tell them, keep your money. I when they discover that I don't have to cry to them for money. I can do my program myself and spend all the money. They have too much healthy respect for my person. A moneyless pastor is powerless. No matter how anointed you are. Because it is money that carries your anointing. If you don't have money, your vision will die when you have your vision. That was why when Jesus came, if you look at Jesus. People think that he is a prophet, Messiah, just came. He dealt with money a lot. Most parables that Jesus actually gave the church, they are all parables of wealth creation of money. The story you hear in the Bible is Peter, I go and throw your net in the, in the river. The fish that first come out, open the mouth, you will see a coin, use that to pay our bills. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a teaching to you that you, have, you can use the skill that he has given to you to create wealth. It's wealth creation. Do you think, go up if you have faith, I will give you a hook. Go and throw it in the Sapele River. Catch any fish. Look in the mouth. Speak in tongues. Let's see if you can have the in the mouth. Nothing. Many of us have become too spiritual. 
to become useless. That the church is to be blamed. The pastors, the leaders. Because they tell anybody, the only thing you can do is just pray and speak in tongues. I tell my church, I didn't build the church or found the church to create more poor people for the world. That's why we have a better life. You know about it. You come to God and your life improves. You don't come to God and your life goes down. <clears throat> Doesn't make any sense to me. So you can't become too spiritual and become actually useless to your family. And you can't become too wealthy to become spiritually useless to God. You must mesh marriage with you. You get it here? You must mesh with you. So why are you here? That's a question. That's a question. I was just I was praying that even with you. Why did you come here? Like I said, I could have been somewhere else. They were wondering if I go there. Oh, then you come. Give me the high table seat. They'll bring wine. They'll bring thing. I told them I'm not coming. I said again, Christians prefer to go where there's much pleasure than where there's information. And information is key. Information is the precious commodity today in the world. Information. If you don't have information, you can walk. <coughs> Let me say something when I enter the issue of process. The issue of process cannot be ignored. In fact, the issue of process is fundamental to your success spiritually and materially. And why do I say that? Because God is very mindful of process. Why? Because God started the process. The earth was not just built haphazardly. It started from his own thoughts. God started from his own thoughts and from his thoughts started creating the earth. And check the way he built the world, he created the world. He didn't just brought everything together at once. We are all coming through processes. Before he brought man, God has created a place for man to stay. God is a stickler to obedience. And process. To succeed, you must start from the bottom. It was talking about. Listen, I was my first member. When God called me, I was working. I left. I left work to follow God. When He told me I would be a man of God, I said, I don't like pastors. You know, I don't like them. They are too poor for my liking. And at that time, because you see, a pastor will wear the same clothes for the next twenty years. So I started looking at them as people who don't know what they do. So I was working when the Lord called me and said, they called me and said, nah, I've got nice people to ask me. <laughs> become a pastor. It's impossible. I can't do that. And because I refuse, God actually hit me the way he did Paul the apostle. There are three days in my life that is lost. I was going to eat in the house of my friend Sancho, Samuel. We were all going to eat in the evening on a Sunday evening. The only thing I knew was that there was food, there was drink, I was seated like this, and everybody was gathered. But when I opened my eyes, it was a Wednesday afternoon, like 3 p.m. I went there on a Sunday. I woke up Wednesday, 3 p.m. And I asked my friend, he was in my father, who he said, when we enter the house to eat and drink, a light came and hit you on the ground. Even the food we're supposed to eat, so you square up our hands. Because as you fell out like that, you hit the table and everything got broken. So we have to rush you home. That something has happened to our brother. You don't, you don't trace. So we're talking from strange language. I got up three days after, three p.m. on a Wednesday. What happened between Sunday night and Wednesday at 3 p.m. is lost to me. But the Lord appeared to me and said, I told you, if you don't follow me, whatever you will see, you will take your hand for me. I resigned my work. I resigned and for three months my boss was paying salary. He said something is wrong with me. If we pay him salary and increase salary, he will come back to work. I told him I will eat the money, I will not come back. And that's why I am up to date. I was my first member. <laughs> Hallelujah. I started from nothing, I went through the process. And where I am today is because I had to go through the process, the training that God gave me. So if you want to, if you want to get to the top, start from the bottom. Follow time-tested principles and rules. 
and you make it spiritually and physically and materially. Secondly, I want to tell you this. You are a product by design. Mm -hmm. Samsung is a product. Mm -hmm. Your mobile phones are all products, right? The cars you drive, they are products. And they sell. You are a product by design. God did not create you for nothing. He created you to announce Him. You are a product by design. And yet, let me say this one. How you market yourself as a product determines the level of success you are in this earth. Look at MTN. Follow the STD. And see that MTN comes with different, different uh, 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 marketing strategies. So look at this one. You see different and You don't want to buy your products. You are a product. And the way you market yourself is the level of success you are going to attain. And many of us today in this earth, both Christian and unchristian people, we are all products. We have a lot of things in us that we should sell out to people that we don't know, we don't sell. I will complain to God, God, if you can bless me with money. I don't pray for money. No, I don't pray for money. I only pray for God's presence. I don't pray for money. God bless me financially. I don't do that. Because he said the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. He gave us everything. What you do with what he has given to use in your hands. Like she said, the issue of the Akara. Not being in prayer now. She just sat down and said, oh, if I sell them, I will make money of it. The earth is the Lord's. You are a product. How you market yourself matters a lot. But many of us just feel that market myself how? Eh, if God wants, I will become what I won't become. Now lie. There are people who will walk this earth with all their talents and abilities and die on some unknown. Because nobody told them what they should do. Like I've said many times in my church, the richest place on this earth is the cemetery. Yeah. Where talents and gift things and abilities are all buried. And many will go to heaven and discover that, oh, I could have been this if somebody taught me to ever have learned this. Design yourself to be a product that is in demand. I told my church, I am the face of HDA. I am the face of my church, and I dress the parts. Listen, I dress the parts. And I tell my members, I am the face. Anywhere you go and you talk about better life, you mention the church, and you see me, you say, yes, name is why. I deliberately, intentionally package myself to represent my organization. That's what I do because I'm the product. I'm the chief marketer of my church. So if I can tell you, come to my church and you will be blessed. If I am not blessed, you won't want to come. Poor men don't preach good gospel. They only preach that fire. Four men don't preach the gospel of life. They only preach hell fire. If you don't repent, you will die. We know we will die. We will not preach it. We know we will die. Do you know in all my life as a minister, for the past 20 years, the people I have converted, I didn't convert them by screaming at them. I didn't even tell many to repent. I met many outside. They were difficult. Oh, what happened? Oh, that's what happened to me. I helped them, assisted them. And they said, ah, oh, thank you, sir. I said, God bless you. They were all after me. And oh, where did you stay? Well, who you be? I'll come to I will, I will come your church. If I am broke, if I am a broke pastor, I won't preach prosperity. You are a product, so design yourself as a housewife. What kind of product will people see of you as a housewife or a husband? Or you are a husband. What kind of product are you to the world? When you see your husband, I say, I see your guy for so and so place, so you see your guy in need of prayer, so that's a bad product. Mm. You saw your guy somewhere, and in fact, he needs a lot of prayers. Oh, we saw the wife somewhere, he took a lot of the worker. Bad product. 
to package yourself because you are a product of Listen, you represent what the Paul says, sir. Paul said, you are living epistles. Hey. And I've asked this question many times to people in my church and outside. Without a big Bible in your hand, how will people know you are a Christian? The only way, listen, I don't put cross in the neck of it. I don't put cross. I just got your own voice. They are making cross of no effect anymore. Mm. If you want the best crosses in the world, you are always at the Christian. You will go to buy and buy pure gold. Mm. They will buy pure gold. Help me one. And we know they are not good boys. And they will tell you there's no difference. We are all Christians. So I stopped using, I have a one for them. But let me ask a question. Without this Bible, sir, if people will see you out there, how will they know you are a Christian? Because the first people, the first church, have no physical Bible in their hands. But they converted the world. They turned the world upside down. Yet they have no Bible in their hands. You know why? Because they knew what they received from God. They developed it and it came out of them. And people saw it and said, these ones are Christ followers. But today, you can't differentiate the church and the world. They are, listen, there are people who will not go to church because of Christians. You know why? Because of the attitude they have. They are neighbors who can't come to your church. They will point, you know the reason? They will point to one believer, that woman there, eh, she can fight. And if going to church is all this rubbish, no need to go to church. The only way you can be different is by being different. I made a vow to myself growing up. I studied my father's house and my mother's family. I know them. I did a history of my lineage. I saw greatness in it and I told myself, my father's children and mother's children will be different from them. Mm-hmm. My father looked at me and said, before he died, he said, how? I think you would like to see me. But he died. But today, because I was delicate about it, I'm the only PhD holder in my father's house and my mother's house. The only one. Oh, if they read, I said I'm pushing something. I want to be different. I hear me again. The only way to be different is to be different. And how do you become different by being different? Your lifestyle, your attitude, your language, your capacity, your skills. And yeah, but listen to me. If you are here, if you are the same, if, if, if what I'm seeing of you now is what I will see one year from today, you've learned nothing. You've learned nothing. You will learn because that's why I ask the question, why are you here? If you came because you are invited, let me just come and just uh, sit down and be a part of the crowd, you miss the point. You miss the point. Your capacity, your skills, your attitude, your lifestyle, your language will make you a different person. Develop a particular skill that you have. Be an expert in it and it comes to a certain point. That's the issue of carving the niche for yourself. I, have, I call some sisters in my church who are doing the fasting program, single sisters. I, I saw them for the first day, second, third day, fourth day. The prayer was heavy. <laughs> They're speaking in tongues. So I said, I asked them, what is, what is wrong? Oh, that they are single sisters, single sisters, they are fasting and praying for husbands. Oh, what a great story. When they are done, send for them. Send for them. I want to see them. I think my office, I sat down. I said, thank you for your prayer. Can you pray for me? Say yes, sir. Pray for the church. I said, yes, sir. Why the fast and pray? Did that be? Oh, God. We need husbands. Then I, I got one simple question. If I want to marry, I point at them. If I want to marry any of you, give me two reasons why I should marry you. What is your selling point? If I want to marry any of you here now, tell me, give me two reasons why I should marry you. What is your selling point? What makes you outstanding from the others? And the other point, looking at me, it's like, it's the question you never expected anybody to ask. 
I will tell you why you have the problem. 80% of Sabbath will come. Some don't have problem, but because of their condition, they assume something is wrong with them. They want to hear something. And they will all come. And if you talk to just about 10 persons among the lot who came, now, please, when you go back, drop your seat of it out. It will be short. Go drop out. In your opinion. Mindset. It's look at the people, you know what they want. You give them, they give you the money. I told my church, Lenny, for 32 straight years, counting this year, I have never been broke once. For 32 consecutive years, I have never been broke. 32 years. And my children will look at me and say, Daddy, how did they do it? I said, My God, they say we can pray too now. Only you got the answer. Mm -hmm. But I tell them, outside church, I got a place. Any pastor who sits behind the altar waiting for crumbs to come from your members, you will tie up your life. Mm. Members are the way of forsaken pastors. If you go today, tomorrow, and beg and beg and ask for career and students and all, let me tell you, yeah, Pastor, let me tell you one thing here. Nobody in your church will train your children to university level. Yeah. You better try to. Nobody. If you think someone that loves you in your church will take your son or daughter to university level, forget it. And most people who are ministers, they forget that they have their own life to live. That's why a minister, I tell them all the time, is a pastor, is my branch pastor. You know where you're walking? Yeah. I said, you don't have a time. You don't have a full time. I won't feed your wife. Yeah. I won't feed your children. I won't buy a place for you. Go work. Put your own time off. Because if all of them become they, they, they fold their hands and, and become reliant on me, one day I will fall off behind the rules. That's the truth. See, every believer needs to understand that we are God's products and we are wealth creators. Dan Luther is very rich, we are built. Why is he rich? If you want to go by prayer, then that is the most prayerful person in Nigeria. But we all know he doesn't pray. He only does what the most of them do. Five times every day. You go somewhere for some minutes. You put your head down. You pray to Allah and you go back. Minutes. But today is the richest. No idea the richest because he's the one who provides you basic needs of more than 90%. Your salt, your sugar, your this, everything is done go A non Muslim, a non Christian. Now, what stops a believer to be like that? Somebody said, uh, if not, if not, if not, if not Christian, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, Why? Why you know, 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 Wealth makes church going better. Church makes wealth makes church going uh, better. If you have money and you go to church and your pastor says there's a need for 20 fans, that the church has no fan, what will we do? You just raise your hand. Sir, don't announce it. I'll see you later. In Lagos, I want to close now. In Lagos, the pastor from India is in congregation. He says, please, so, uh, where we are today is too small and uh, we look for a good place to buy. But the amount is too much. The hall who want to buy, it's about 300 million. Ah, God. Ah, we do what? So they're crying and buying and losing. A young girl there, not yet 35 years, was in the service. A young small girl, not 35 years old. After closing, they said, Daddy. They cry and say, my daughter, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. He said, tired of what? Of serving God. He said, now we want a place and put at your mama. He said, not your problem, say. Mm. I'll come and see you tomorrow on Monday. On Monday, that little girl went to meet the pastor and gave him one million dollars. The pastor looked at him and said, look at her and said, 
What do you do? You say you partisan. Let's go to the bank. Go to the bank. One million dollars. The power. Channel to Nigeria. To Nigerian currency. How much you donate? Immediately call the whole of the property. I'm ready to buy. The master just said, he said yes. The agent did everything. I got all together. Now, no longer crying or praying. The confidence and boldness was there. They went there, they bought the place. The next Sunday, he came to church and said, Church, God has told me that place I complained about last Sunday has been bought by a church member. Everybody got up. Church, he says, sir, church member how? In our church. He said, yes. And it's not possible, sir. I said, why? He said, church member how? They called the, the best student. The best side of the church. He was talking to quietly. You know, the money makes you stop talking. <laughs> money. People who have money don't shout in their prayers. Father, mm. thank you. But one of you. I appreciate you. That's how we should be praying for the poor man. Father, today, you will hear that. Who you want? Who you want to fight? Can you fight the Lord? What is going on here? As soon as they announced, they announced what she did. People came out and said, Daddy, my shame for us, so we will judge a small girl like this. So I'm pleased to be with you. People have plenty of money. And the other thing, the pastor asked twice the amount. You know what the shop leader said? Every money remaining is your personal money. Who bought the place? Who furnish it? The balance is your own. The top Sunday, when the man of God came into the altar, as he started talking, he was speaking in tongues, dancing, and he didn't preach. He spoke in tongues, prophesied, started dancing, including time. A man of God was happy to get I'm happy. Money creates happiness. Money is not a source of happiness, but for the largest extent, it makes you happy. I'm serious. Though. Money creates happiness. So if you are a Christian or whoever you are, love money. Outside the love of God, my next love is money. And God says, no, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. It is not the love of money. If you don't love a woman, you marry a woman. If you don't love money, you can't look for money. It is the exact that in obedient ambition. I will do anything to make money. That is wrong. Money is not wrong. If you don't love him, money only flows to those who love him. Who love it. So that's the thing to be explained properly. The love of money is not evil. It's that inordinate ambition. I will kill I will give you to make money that is evil. I love money. Hallelujah. Let me round up with you. Why are you here? The answer, because we want to be different. Right? Different from one area of life. The person that played here, I want to be different this. Different in what area of life. Listen to this word. Until you know what stands you out from others, you will suffer limitations. If you don't know what makes you different, you will suffer limitations. And I pray, when I when I when I started, when I started my when I became the minister and God called me, I had to fast for three and a half days. Three and a half days. I fasted and prayed. I almost I feel like boom, I almost died. You know why I did that? That there be no ignorance in my future. Anything that will stand before me spiritually as a barrier, that thing must not stand and walk from me. You want to be different, that's good. But first, you must know the area where you want your life to be different. Look at what your sister said. I saw people doing school runs, Abby, and she just thought I could make it easier for them. And she brought boss. Now, for any, any woman her age, a friend who say, what are you doing now with the You don't even get sense. It's for us, it's their money. Understand this? But the people who are using the buses, they are paying money. It's not free now. They are paying money. And if you add a naira to a naira, back to naira, before you know it, you're making our money there. There are so many things you can do to make life different for you. Spiritually and materially. So many things. 
Discover yourself. Discover who you are and what you are made for. Discover who you are. Because that's going to church every Sunday, or even if you're not a believer, if you stay at home, discover yourself. Who are you? Why are you here? What kind of product do you have? How are you marketing yourself? And you can bear witness, women, go to most of these churches. Our guests are not good for marriage. At all. I'm not spoiling them. Mm-hmm. I pray for them. Attitude, character. In fact, eh, at times you people get angry with them. So what's wrong with you? Hey, wait, 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 you see a senior in his church, your mother's age, you are no better. He said, Sure. He come in and come home. I said, You expect to go into a woman with this one? He said, Sure. And the man has a pin. Some people are just, they don't, know what, they don't know what they do. And if we must know what we, what we, we want in life, <laughs> I know who I am. I know what I want. If you give me one billion naira now, in seven days or twenties, because in my head there's a system. Everything I want for money is all in my system. So you bring the money, I dispose them right in my head. I work with my vision. I work. I go out with my ideas. So who are you? And what do you want? That's what we're here. We're not much here. Like I said, if we have announced a prophetic gathering, miracles, we may we walk. The blind will see. You will see uh, the outside. They will come. So what I do is this one. I do the same method. I my church will work. And that's a prophetic program. The crowd will come. My teaching is in government in all I do. I don't go and start prophesying that do anything please. He heard this for 30 minutes. So all the years with attention. I will first teach him better for finish. I said now let's go to where we are here. That's it. You have to ask us. You have to drag the people to your church. You must use the method that is available now. If you go there and say, uh, what's happening if you come to my church? I will teach you how to avoid hellfire. What are you doing? Hellfire, hellfire. Man of sinners. First thing, you have to have a hellfire matter. But we have a message. Do I say you? So there are some things you must learn how to do. Please. Don't use this occasion for nothing. Don't look. I told I said, I could have just traveled somewhere and said, Lenny, I can't come. When they come, I tell him, I think Lenny, they know where I'm coming. I could travel to anything I want to travel. They have to have one. But I said, you know, one thing about leadership is you learn from others. You learn from others. No matter how much you have known, no matter how much you have taken in. You will learn one little word. You know I told myself just now? I told myself when I was there. I think you should get what you should do. Yes. No, I said that. No, I said that. No, I said that. I'm going to conference just now. I'll be hearing a convention. I'll be hearing a convention. I'll be hearing a Mine is called the Born World of Life. And it's a program that is the Born of Life. I told them, they said, why do you do this? We need to have our church. I told them, I said, many can't have our church. It's good, but then, I don't want it. I said, now don't shop your food. And it's 19 for your I said, but what you should tell me is, let's look for the program that Saturday in the morning. We can bring it to a guest. We will teach women the little things they can do. I can make them survive. So while she was talking, I said, I think she will be for me next year. Yes. People need to hear some. Listen, though, to become rich is not big, though. It's small. It's small. All that people want money with this. My money, no money, money. This my money, so put it around. You can make your money, money different. Yes. And in the morning, do you know how to confess one thing or last? Not to see the world, I'll confess that. There's somebody in a room, if you know you worry where they were. That Ojo Road job to run about. Yes. They run about there. Here this way. Yes. Seven this way. That run about there. There's a woman there that is a specialist in human progression. 
Do you know every Saturday I'm confessing? You? <laughs> I will tell my secretary, Inka, sir, go there. If you open my two fridges, big fridges, food is not there. But somehow, somehow, the way she prepares her prepare soon, if you go there by 10 30, you don't finish. By 6 30, you can't run the way. Because she does her own differently. In that same area that doesn't serve the soup now. So I said, we need to teach people how to create wealth. Let this let give this make their own business. But there's some small, small things we can do. Honestly, I'm honest. There are some little things we can do that will make us not cry, not suffer. So when she was talking, I said, hmm, if I've seen her before October, if I've seen that because they didn't come to anybody. And I said, if you don't bring anybody to teach entrepreneurship, I don't want anything to make me go. So that day was just free. Who are you? Why are you here? What's your name? What's your special skill? How are, you, how are you marketing your product? You are the product. How are you marketing yourself as a product? How do you do it? When people see you, what do you think about you? When they see you, what do people think about you? Do they want to buy into you? Or do they want to run out on you? You must have something that really will desire you 24 7. I have told women most times in my church there's only one thing you must find in yourself that makes your man stick with you. Look for that thing that makes him crazy because you discover it developing. She go work out, go work out, but my wife, she knows this better than any other woman. There's some things you must do out of it. Honestly, you must learn how to be different from all. Don't be the same with everybody. I have told my children, they are all grown up. Don't be like me. Be better than me. I told my children, I said, if I have a PhD, I have two PhDs. I challenge them. So since I have a PhD, what must you want? I won't tell them I want to go to school again next year. I told the children, I said, you told your Google to your head. I said, I want to have one PhD. Oh, that is it. I said, I want, I want to read the thing for the form of reading. Just for the form of it. I want to read for last. I said, what the issue? They said, that is not working. I said, hey, whoa. That's what makes me different. I write two devotions every day. I write morning devotion. I write evening devotion every day for the past five to seven years. The pastor really said, you know, they sleep for night. I said, I sleep. But I take joy in writing. So in the morning, I write the morning devotion. In the evening, I have an evening devotion. Outside, other write up and prayer points. I send it out every, I do it every day for the past six to seven years. And it's building me up. So be different. This program, look at the word there, stand out. That's what you must catch out. It's a message to you, stand out. It's like you stand out. Really come out of the crowd and be different. God bless you.